Hi everyone, I'm the Rambling Photon, and today I'd like to talk about cultural survival. Um, so this is a, a video about uh, memetics, um, and I'm going to be talking about uh, sort of how I conceive of um, different cultural survival mechanisms that are, uh, I think, end up being useful in thinking about how cultures interact and how you make them successful. So, um, uh, in my last video on memetics, or I guess my initial video on memetics, I talked about sort of the base condition of you need to have your culture survive um, and not completely die out, not have literally nobody following that culture. Um, and so those, and there are two basic ways of spreading your culture. There's either um, having babies and spreading your culture to your children or there's converting outside groups um, into into your culture. Um, so uh, there's sort of a, a perpetuation threshold, uh, a survival threshold, um, where you're converting people faster than the replacement rate. Um, and then there's uh, sort of the, uh, once you get past that, there's um, spreading your culture faster and um, spreading it to other people of other cultures. Um, so the question is, in some ways, what what are the traits that help a culture spread faster and survive better? Um, so obviously, uh, one way to do that is to have a culture that values um, reproduction and procreation. Okay, so there are different ways that different cultures have done this, and I think that if you look at basically any um, sort of obvious culture, any um, major player in geopolitics, for example, um, in general, at least in the past, they have had a culture that values reproduction, that values motherhood, that values... Um, the raising of children, uh, and finds ways of facilitating uh, this procreation. Okay, so um, if you have a culture that doesn't value this, and um, so one example of this in American history is the Shakers. Um, they basically said, uh, none of our members are going to have sex, none of our members are going to have kids, and they died out pretty quickly. I think that's pretty easy to predict. Um, so in order for a uh, culture to perpetuate itself, you need to have some valuation on the generation of children, the generation of the next generation. So uh, outside of reproduction and, and creating the next generation, um, different cultures need to worry about uh, interactions with other cultures. Uh, so just as genetic species have competition with other um, other predators, other other species, um, different cultural species also have competition with other cultural species. And so here you have um, success uh, helped by mechanisms for uh, assimilating or, or converting other cultures into your culture. Um, and you have sort of offensive and defensive if you want to think of it in in those terms so offensive would be converting others into your um, cultural group uh, so examples of this might be like a, an imperialist or um, uh, an expansionist mindset where you go you conquer other people and then say um, you must follow these uh, these rules which I lay down for you. Now another sort of more peaceful version of that would be uh, missionary work. You go out and you spread the word about Christianity or some religion or other, right? Where you um, are converting them to the values of the religion. You're converting them to the culture of the religion. Uh, so that's one mechanism, or that that's sort of one one side of it. The other side is defensive, 
how do you deal with a culture that is trying to convert you um and how do you uh, manage that uh and this one i think is um so here we have you you can have some sort of like xenophobic or xenophobia type of um, response where the outsider is sort of shut out and ostracized and disallowed from uh bringing in cultural values that way i by you know ignoring them or or exiling them or what have you um i think though that there are other responses uh that in some ways are are can be extremely beneficial to the culture that is in um I guess in my terminology, defending, although that might not be the right term for it. Um, and that's assimilation. So when an outside culture comes in and starts interacting, the uh, sort of host culture, the invaded culture, if you will, can respond by adapting and assimilating the values, uh, certain values of the invader but not necessarily changing their core values or making a, a sort of a general shift of their entire culture to some of the new values of the old cult uh, of, of the um, invading culture. Um, so in that sense, you can, if you do it right, you can take some of the good aspects of the new culture and shed some of the old hopefully negative aspects of your own culture um, and end up with something that is better than both. Um, and that sort of makes the, the host culture richer, hopefully, um, although not necessarily, and then um, allows it to um, better convert and assimilate the people who are coming in. Okay, so that's uh, sort of um, uh, one aspect. Now, um, I guess... A part of that which I uh, should talk about also is when um, the invading culture comes in instead of letting them convert you you can just convert them right and that um, that assimilation uh, can grow your numbers because any of any of the outsiders who come in end up bolstering your own numbers they end up part of your own culture um, now I did mention um sort of the, the adopting different aspects of the other culture uh this is a part of um cultural adaptation that i think is extremely important um and it's one of the things that uh sort of america the the whole melting pot um analogy that people use i think it's very valuable um in that uh when cultures come in, we want to take the best aspects of those cultures and integrate them with our own. And we want to adopt the best parts of every culture, basically, and then shed all the bad aspects, the negative aspects of our own. Um, and this is how we grow and evolve as a cultural species. And I think that's a good thing. Um, now, adaptation doesn't necessarily go well um, if you have um, if you start picking up bad aspects instead of good aspects then you can end up decreasing your survival ability and um, end up moving towards extinction uh, and that's a cultural extinction um, and that's from a, a cultural survival point of view that's terrible obviously okay so uh, what are the traits that uh, I would consider bad for the survival of uh, a cultural species? So obviously you have um, sort of the, the reproductive side. So you have a discouraging of reproduction. Uh, that would be one negative aspect. Uh, and then I think another aspect um, sort of could be the... the the inverse of, of what I was talking about before, where um, you, um, what I've been calling it is tolerance without assimilation. So when an outside culture comes in, instead of either trying to adopt 
um, or assimilate the people. So instead of trying to convert them to your culture and take the best aspects of their culture, instead you just let them be, you let them do their thing, and never try to integrate them into the society. Um, and the reason I think that this is negative is it essentially allows for the slow build of a um, almost a cultural coup um, where you have groups of people who are not part of the prevailing culture build up over time until they can um, affect the change that they want. So an example of this might be um, you take uh, Islamic communities in Europe that have ghettoized and have formed their own subcultures um, and are not getting assimilated into wider European culture. That's sort of a, a almost a malignant form of it. Now, there are benign forms of this, which I don't think are as problematic, but it depends on the culture that is sort of doing the... Um, uh, infecting is not the right word, but uh, that are doing the... Uh, that are being tolerated, I guess. Um, so if you look at Jewish communities, which have tended historically to, to end up ghettoized, um, they were not malignant because they were not trying to convert or looking to convert other people to Judaism, historically. But they were allowed to maintain their separation and their... Um, Jewish community and heritage separate from everyone else. Uh, in that case, that's not really a problem because the Jewish community is not a toxic uh, ideology. They're not, um, they're not trying to spread the Jewish culture in the same way. They're just trying to propagate. They're not trying to um, uh, take over uh, in any real sense. So, uh, in those cases, um, that can be negative depending on which culture is being tolerated, right? So, the, when an Islamic culture, for example, um, is, gets an enclave and, and starts spreading and breeding and um, ends up being a majority population, you find that there's a cultural shift. Instead of people... Um, in the Islamic community assimilating into Britain or France or Germany. Instead, what they're doing is they're sort of starting a, a, a culture war to, to take over those different countries. Um, so that is a negative survival trait. The tolerance of that can be a negative survival trait on the part of the Germans, the French, the British, etc. All you would need to do to change that from a survival trait uh, a negative survival trait to a positive survival trait is to uh, assimilate them in some fashion, okay? Um, and this sort of actually dovetails with um, another, what I would consider negative survival trait, and that's passivity um, in the sense of uh, letting another culture walk all over you um, in the sense of not uh, taking measures for your own survival, um, not adapting to ensure your own survival. So if this group comes in and um, they're uh, sort of invading you from within, right? So they're um, setting up their own enclaves and then spreading their own culture. And you as a culture don't respond to that. That's what I mean by passivity. You're not you're not doing anything about it. You're not adapting to the situation, um, and the same could be said not just for that, but for explicit invasions. So when um, uh, another power comes in and invades your culture, literally like with an army, um, and you're passive about it. And you do nothing either culturally or militarily or um, at all, right? That's one way that you can get, a, you, you can die out is you just let the other culture completely dominate you and take you over, right? Okay? Um, 
So these are just some of my thoughts on uh, cultural survival and some of the cultural traits that I think are sort of positive and negative. Um, I will, when I find time, I will try and be doing a little bit more research to see if others have done um, work specifically on the, these topics. Um, this is sort of just, again, continuing my, my framework of how I think about these topics. Um, so we'll see this, where this goes. Um, anyway, that's, uh, those are my thoughts on sort of the, the mimetic cultural survival mechanisms and, and cultural survival framework. Um, if you like my content, uh, like, share, subscribe, all that shit. This has been the Rambling Photon. Hope to catch you next time.